Hey friends, welcome back to Civil Engineering Master. We know the two technical terms we use in detailing. One is development length and another one is anchorage length. But do you think these two technical terms are the same or do we have any difference between these two? In this video, we are going to discuss in detail about the development length and anchorage length and what is the difference between these two technical terms and how we can calculate the development length and anchorage length for different diameter of bars. So without further delay, let's begin now. First, let's start off with what is development length. Development length helps to ensure a secure bond between the concrete and the steel reinforcement and also it helps to prevent the bar from slippage and effective stress transfer. It enhances the structural integrity. In this image, see there is a development length provided for this bar. This provides the secure bond and also it helps to prevent the bar from the slippage. Because as you know, for this beam, the bending moment will be like this. So here at top, you will be having the tension. Tension means this top bar is stressed out. That means pulled out. So if we don't provide the proper development length, the bar will slip out from the concrete. So it helps to prevent the bar from the slippage. And also the effective stress transfer is happening by providing this development length and this increases the structural integrity. Next let's look into the factors which are affecting the development length that is grade of steel, diameter of the bar, bond stress, concrete grade, type of reinforcement and cover to the reinforcement. You know the grade of steel is Fe415 or Fe500. We have different diameters of the bar starting from 8 mm to 32 mm bond stress. We have different grades of concrete and types of reinforcement whether it is a plain bar or a deformed bar and cover to the reinforcement. Next one is anchorage length. This anchorage length also helps to transfer the full force in the bar to the surrounding concrete and it ensures the anchorage between one RCC member to the other RCC member. For example, beam to the column. It is the required length necessary to develop full resisting force. Also, this anchorage length can be provided when the development length is not sufficient. It may be little confusing. I'll explain you a bit here with the code and also the drawing so that you will get a proper idea of what is the difference between this anchorage length and the development length. There is not much difference between this development length and anchorage length. It is a very subtle difference between these two terms. Let's understand that clearly so that it will be very helpful for us to do the detailing. Let's look into the code SP16 which is the design aid for RCC structure in that the development length and anchorage length details are given. So to calculate the development length we have to use this formula LD is equal to 5 sigma x upon 4 tau BD. So we have seen in the beginning that the what are all the factors affecting the development length. Phi is the diameter of the bar, sigma s is the stress in the bar and tau BD is the bond stress. So by using this formula we need to calculate the development length. When it comes to anchorage length, if the bar is in tension, a standard hook and anchorage value equivalent to a straight length of 16 dia we have to use and a 90 degree bend has an anchorage value of 8 dia. The anchorage values of standard hooks and bends for different diameter of bars are given in the table 67. Let's look into it. You have to understand here clearly. Anchorage means we provide only two types. One is standard hook and another one is standard 90 degree bend. In table 64, we have the development length for fully stressed plain bars. And here we have the development length values for fully stressed deformed bar that is, a, that is 415 Newton per mm square. And in table 66, we have fully stressed deformed bars development length values. Let's look into the anchorage value of hooks and bent. As I told you before, we have two types of anchorages. One is standard hook and another one is standard 90 degree bent. Only we have these two types of anchorages. So bar diameter is given. In this table, we have different uh, diameter of bars and the values of anchorages. So anchorage value of hook. If we provide the hook, we have to use these values. If we provide 90 degree bend, we have to use these values. In both cases, minimum of 
four times dia of bar we have to provide if we have the 8 mm dia bar we have to use 6.4 cm as the bend this bend length has to be 64 cm see here the values are given in cm so in this way you have to use this standard hook and 90 degree bend let's look into this drawing so here when you take any beam detailing everywhere we provided the development length the beam reinforcement has been bent inside the column now we know clearly about what is development length and what is anchorage length so here i'm telling you the similarity between the development length and the anchorage length because when you take this beam this is your minimum ld ld is your development length you know how to calculate this development length so from this face of the support we have to get the develop minimum development length as per the calculation okay but here we will not be getting the development length since the column width is very small so what we are doing here we are bending this bar inside the column you have to understand this here we are providing the anchorage length that means that 90 degree bend as we have seen in the code, we have the standard hook and the 90 degree bend in anchorage length. So here we are providing the anchorage in order to get the sufficient development length. So this is the difference between these two terms, development length and anchorage length. In order to get the sufficient development length, we are providing the anchorage of bar. Okay. So in this case, we have only this option. We have to bend the bar inside the column and to get the required development length in case if we have the wider column like this for example we have the development length of 600 mm over here but the column width itself we have 230 we cannot get the 600 mm development length over here but if you take this column the column width itself it is 900 mm so this bar so our required development length is only 600 mm. So we get the sufficient development length over here without bending the bar, without anchoring the bar inside the column. So this is the difference between the anchorage length and the development length. We have to provide the anchorage length in order to get the sufficient development length. So these two terms are interconnected and you know this 90 degree bend we have to provide the according to the diameter this length has to be provided minimum four times diameter has to be provided so overall both development length and anchorage length are required to maintain the structural integrity and the choices between the anchorage length and the development length depends on the specific requirements and the constraint of the structural member code has clearly specified that how we have to calculate the development length and the anchorage length and how it is interconnected so friends i hope you understand the concept clearly if you really like the content hit the like button and also share it with your friends and don't forget to subscribe the channel for more videos if you have any queries your comments are always welcome please post it in the comment box thank you for watching